Hello class, we're going to work on chapter 19, income taxes. I'm going to do a deferred tax liability problem and a deferred tax asset problem. This will, should be uh, very helpful for you. So let's do our deferred tax liability problem. Now, this is, the deferred tax liability is what we want, right? Because we're not paying now, we'll pay it later. So we want a deferred tax liability, not the deferred tax asset. So work company has a $15,000 installment sale so it's a fifteen thousand dollar gross profit on the installment sale now the gross profit is recognized for financial accounting in 2020 all of it all fifteen thousand but the gross profit is recognized in installments over the life of five years for tax purposes so it's fifteen thousand divided by five is three thousand per year the company also earns ten thousand dollars from other transactions and the tax rates 40 percent so here's what we're going to do for the um, the taxable income now for the tax we have two numbers we keep up with we keep up with taxable income and we keep up with income taxes payable taxable income goes on the tax form right so that's going to be the ten thousand every year plus the three thousand each year it's going to be the same all the way down so $13,000 for five years is $65,000 total taxable income. The way we get income taxes payable, we'll take $13,000 times 40%, and that's $5,200 all the way down. So you could take $65,000 times 40%, that's $26,000 of income taxes payable. Now the actual payment is based on this number right here, based on the taxable income and based on the uh, taxes payable is the amount we're going to give uh, to the IRS or to the state government. Uh, so let's just assume federal tax so that the IRS. Now for GAAP purposes we have financial income and we have income tax expense. So income tax expense is the accounting number income tax payable is the tax number. So the way this one works is we've got 10,000 each year and the first year you're going to have the 10,000 plus the 25, I'm sorry, the 15,000, that'll be 25,000 total. So that is, there we go, 25,000. So, and then 10,000 the remaining year, so the total is going to be 65,000 just like the total taxable income. And we'll take the 25,000 times 40%. That's 10,000 the first year and copy it all the way down. So here's what we have. Even though our tax expense number is 10,000, our taxes we pay is 5,200. Now in future years, our expense is only 4,000 a year, but our taxes are 5,200 that we're going to pay. So this is where we want to be. We would rather have the expense now and pay later. So we're going to have a little bit higher expense each of the four years uh, after the first year, but that's fine. We'd rather have a deferred tax liability, pay later, right? Expense now, pay later, that would be fine. So let's calculate what is the deferred tax liability? What do we need to show on our balance sheet as our deferred tax liability? Well, all you have to do is take the difference in these two numbers, the difference in the 13 and the 10, so we've got four more years. So at the end of 2020, we have the 13 and the 25, so we're at the end of 2020. We've got a $3,000 difference every year for a total of 12,000 times 40% every year. That's going to be 1,200, 1,200, 1,200, 1,200. So our deferred tax asset, I'm sorry, deferred tax liability is 4,800, 4,800. This is, uh, this 1,200 is the difference between the income taxes payable 5200 and the income tax expense of 4000 So the deferred tax liability is the 3000 times 40% times the four more years. So our deferred tax liability is 4800 On the balance sheet, deferred tax liability. Now, income tax expense, we start with deferred tax liability at the beginning of the year is zero. At the end of the year, it's 4800 We just calculated that. So it increases by 4800 for the year our current income tax expense i'm sorry income tax payable is 5200 we know that 
And so the total income tax expense for the year is 10,000. We know that number also. We know this number and the expense number and the payable number. All right, as we continue through then, we're going to reduce this by 1,200, right? So this will be the 4,800 uh, minus the 1,200 because it reverses a little bit each year. The beginning was 4,800, it goes down 1,200. The expense is 5,200 all of the uh, five years. And our income tax payable is 5,200 all uh, five years. The income tax expense is going to be 4,000 for the remaining four years. So that shows we've got our deferred tax liability goes down 1,200. And then it goes down 1,200 again, down to 2,400, another 1,200 down because we're, we're saying the payable is 5,200 and our expense is only 4,000. It goes down 1,200 again and finally 1,200 again. So at the end of the year, we have zero, end of the year five, we have zero in deferred tax liability at the end of the year. All right, so that's how it works slowly over time. It starts at 4,800 and then over the next four years, it goes down to zero evenly. So how do we make the, the journal entry to recognize the deferred tax liability? We're going to debit income tax expense. That's the 10,000 number we've been talking about. We have income tax payable as a credit to 5,200. The difference is going to be a deferred tax liability, a credit. This is our originating entry to set up our deferred tax liability. Because we had an expense of 10,000, but we only paid 5,200, we have a deferred tax liability. We're going to pay 4,800 extra in the amount of $1,200 each year for four years. So what's our journal entry at the end of 2021 and the next three years? It's going to be debit income tax expense of $4,000. We're going to credit income tax payable of $5,200. And then we'll debit the liability, slowly get rid of the liability of $1,200. All right, so that's how you do a deferred tax liability. Pretty simple, straightforward. It just gets a little tricky. Just um, write it all out and kind of show how it works and you should be in good shape. Take my spreadsheet and modify it uh, for a new problem and that's fine. All right, let's look at the deferred tax asset problem. Fortune Magazine Company received $15,000 in advance for 2020 and we're going to provide subscriptions to a magazine for the next three years, 2021, 2022, and 2023. Now that's for financial accounting purposes because we owe them that money back or we have to provide them the service, which is the magazine subscription. All of the 15,000, because it comes in as cash, it's recognized as taxable for tax purposes. Fortune earns an additional income of 50,000 each year and the tax rate is 40%. So here's how it works for for tax. They received the 50,000 plus because they received the cash of 15,000 then we're going to recognize all of 65,000 in 2020. But for 2021 it's going to be 50,000 and then 50,000 and 50,000. And then multiply it times 40 percent we have income taxes payable these amounts. So we we have revenue over four years and taxes over four years. Now, for gap purposes, we recognize the regular 50,000 for 2020, and then we recognize an additional 5,000 each year. So the 50,000 plus the 5,000 times the 40% gives us 20,000 and then 22,000 for the next three years. So once again, the total taxable income is 215,000. The total financial income is 215,000. There's a timing difference, as you see, and the income tax payable should be similar total number. Now, we know the tax rate for all uh, four years is going to be 40,000, so that makes it easier uh, on a problem. All right, let's calculate the deferred tax asset. Well, we have only three future years. We got 5,000, 5,000, 5,000 times 40%, that's going to be 2,000, 2,000, 2,000. 
and it adds up to be that's the same thing that you took 15,000 times 40 percent that is 6,000 so our deferred tax asset is 6,000 all right let's look at the income tax expense we have at the end of the year we have 6,000 as our deferred tax asset the beginning of the year is zero so we need to set up this is a deferred tax asset of 6,000 we know our income tax payable is 26,000 and our income tax expense is 20,000 now here we're in a situation we'd rather not be in we're paying 26,000 we're only getting the expense of 20,000 but you say hey but I've got an asset for the future you you can pay less in the future because you're prepaying more of your taxes this year all right so the next two years three years rather it would go down 2,000 go down 2,000 down 2,000 so we're going to have income tax expense of 22,000 each year even though our income tax payable is 20,000 each year so it'll reverse and the total payable and the total expenses will be the same so what's our journal entry to recognize a deferred tax asset we'll debit the first year income tax expense of 20,000 credit income tax payable of 26,000 and we're setting up a deferred tax asset of 6,000 this is not the asset you want to have a deferred tax. hey you paid more taxes so that's awesome good for you right so deferred tax asset debit balance just like any other asset then over the next three years you would get rid of it with debit income tax expense of 22,000 right there credit income tax payable of 20,000 right there and then you credit the deferred tax asset and so therefore I'm sorry you um, this should be a credit yes wrong side here credit the deferred tax asset of 2000 uh, need to put this back so we're going to credit the deferred tax asset because it has a debit balance normally credit it to make it go away now let's just do one little valuation um, our entry is a little bit smoother than what the book does a little bit uh, quicker let's say you think 2000 of the deferred tax asset will not be realized then we'll just debit income tax expense and credit allowance for deferred tax asset so this deferred tax asset would be reduced by 2000 all right that's how you do a deferred tax liability and a deferred tax asset in chapter 19 all right thanks good luck keep going